Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I have a $29 vintage electronics haul. Let's take a look. Now, obviously I am going to use the word vintage uh, loosely for some of this stuff and less so loosely for others. So let's take a look at what's in the bag first. I got this along with this for $10. And I really didn't need this stuff, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to take a look at, see, uh, it looked like there might've been some things in here I didn't have. So although it's kind of a messy pile of stuff, uh, I'm not gonna go through every single part, but let me spread it out and show you some of the more interesting things. So I'll go through this stuff pretty quickly, but uh, I threw out a lot of the just plain junk that was in the bag, but, um, We've got a bunch of these Radio Shack quarter watt resistors and half watt resistors, which is kind of nice. Uh, you know, a lot of times I have from AliExpress, the ones I have are sixth watt, or if I get uh, really high end, I'll get quarter watt, but it's nice to have some bigger resistors and some pretty common values. I'm working on a resistor organization project, so I'll be adding these to those. I did chuck a lot of the single resistors that were just kind of laying around, uh, but the ones that were stuck together, I pretty much kept. Got a couple different switches here that are just uh, sort of, I wouldn't say unique form factors, but just kind of nice to have form factors. I've got this uh, 15 amp or, or 10 amp made in Taiwan. Doesn't look like it lights up or anything like that. Just a, a normal chunky toggle switch. And the same thing here with a, uh, a glows green when the circuit is on 20 amp 12 volt switch which is kind of cool kind of old school it's really funny because i just literally needed one of these yesterday to uh when i was testing out some stuff but these little things that you can put the stake on terminal uh ends on little terminal strips so very cool there's a little collection of some radio shack push buttons and maybe a few other things stuck in the bag here but uh, again, nothing earth shattering. We've got a couple switches, a couple mini toggles, uh, four of these little mini push buttons in red and black. And to me, you know, it's not that these things are incredibly awesome, but I just don't have this stuff. And I love the fact that you can switch out the little ends on them and, and all that kind of stuff. So if I had to store this in its own container, I probably wouldn't even keep it. But the fact that I can throw it in there with the rest of my switches and the rest of my buttons and, and I may find a use for it, I find that pretty cool. Not exactly sure what this is for, but it looks like some sort of standoff. Uh, so it looks like a standard thread. So I will hang on to it if it is uh, and random. Uh, I've got some of these little connectors here. <sighs> Nothing I'm particularly gonna gonna use. Uh, little antenna connectors and things like that. Uh, there are a fair amount of little random knobs and like potentiometer, rotary, encoder knobs. This is a uh, this is kind of a two in one jobby. I felt something click. Yeah, so you've got this one and this one, which are two independent potentiometers. I'm guessing this was pulled out of some kind of uh, audio application and some random knobs. No reason to get rid of those. And uh, this is kind of funny, but little panel mount uh, nuts are super valuable because you lose them and then you wind up taking them off a new one. So anytime I find these, I just hang on to them. Uh, I've got a collection of diodes here. Just, uh, I have a ton of small diodes, but I don't really have many chunky six amp, uh, diodes and see what these things are. These are rectifier diodes. They say the amperage 25 assorted miniature one amp diodes. So even though I have some, I don't know that the ones I have are one amp. Uh, another set of that same 25 random diodes. A, uh, six amp chunky diode here and some little teeny tiny ones, I'm guessing. Those are diodes as well. Uh, got a collection of some little transistors. Got a NPN, uh, PN2907, not sure what the general application of those is, uh, 40 volt transistors. Uh, let's see here, I think I have one of those little testers. So top tip, I always uh, keep these little nine volt power bricks and attach them to these things so that for these little meters, I don't have to go around hunting up batteries. So this one is a BJT NPN. Uh, so yeah, just little doohickeys to throw into my collection. I have a couple of other mosfet type things that I don't even know if I'm gonna bother saving. Uh, anyway, and I've got these bags of chips here. 
this is a uh, BY seventy five four Y, which is a it's a high power Toshiba. I believe it's a MOSFET. Uh, I've got these ERF twenty thirties, which are uh, RF transistors. I think these are generally used in CB. I think all this stuff is used in CB and ham radio. Uh, we've got these. Uh, what are they called here? These uh, audio amplifiers by Toshiba. This one here is labeled a little clearer. TA7222AP. Uh, and, you know, the fact... Do I need these? No, but the fact that I have them means that I might try to do a project with them just to learn about them. So I've been wanting to learn a lot of, uh, of more basic electronic stuff. Going to move quickly. We've got some of these 10-watt resistors. Uh, this one, I think, is a 100-ohm. 100-ohm, 100-ohm. 10 watt resistors, uh, some little knobs, and HDMI, what is that thing? A mini DV to, or mini display port to HDMI adapter in not awesome shape, and a few little Stacon connectors and zip ties and stuff like that. So that is what's in the electronics bag. So a few months ago, I brought home this and I showed you this on the channel. Uh, I've been trying to work on my basic electronics knowledge. And so uh, when I bought that one, the one that I really wanted was this one. Uh, but it was like $60 or something like that at the time. And they do one of those things where prices go down as the months go on. So I decided to play roulette and... Uh, and wait this one out and I finally was able to get this for $19 which is still probably my most expensive thrift store purchase ever but uh, this is the Lafayette 150 and 1 1C electronic project kit and that number looks like a Radio Shack number so I don't know if this thing was originally a Radio Shack part or not but here it is so I'm not sure if I'm going to be recapping this or not. We'll see. Uh, it'll deserve its own video, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. But it has this uh, CDS. No idea what that is. Solar battery. So these two things look like they could be missing. Uh, there is an IC unit, whatever that is. A uh, DC micro ammeter, signal light, speaker. A very cool looking clear relay that you can see what's going on inside of the relay. Uh, slide switch, ooh, very nice uh, control knob, uh, AM radio, right here radio tuner, uh, some places for microphones and all that kind of stuff down here and to hook into the relay. And then we've got these banks of resistors and transformers and capacitors and this uh, Morse code thing and places to put various batteries. And uh, most importantly, this one came with the physical book. Now the book is not in the most awesome shape, but what it does tell me is that this was written in 1970. So uh, what would that make it? 50 years old. Wow, 50 years old. Um, so, I mean, things like machine gun sound generator, uh, two transistor speaker, microphone transmitter, all kinds of just really cool projects in here. Uh, now this does not look like Compared to the other one, uh, compared to this kit, which got a lot more into the theory, I'm not seeing crazy amounts of theory in here. I'm just seeing a little bit about what it can do and what wires and what resistors to put where. Uh, but I think there's still some things that can be learned about this, learned in this thing. So, uh, wow, this is really cool. Talk, telling you how to put an antenna in your tree and all that kind of stuff. So I think there's going to be a lot of fun. I am absolutely going to do some of these projects and uh, and work on my basic electronics knowledge. But I just thought this thing was way too cool to pass up. And I wanted it to get both a good home and a home in a place where I could share it with the world. So this is the Lafayette 150 and 1 IC Electronic Experimenters Kit. So I decided to pop the camera back on because I was thinking about it that I'll bet nobody stole the uh, solar battery, the whatever it is, out of this thing. Uh, I'm guessing that it is it has fallen in there. So um, I'm going to take the last couple screws out. All right, did I get them all? All right, gently. Yeah, hey, check that out. We just held in there with tape. Uh, so maybe what I'll do is I'll clean that. And then I saw this kind of popped up. And maybe I'll clean that and we'll 
I, know, I guess you couldn't really see that very well. This speaker feels a little bit loose. And uh, maybe what I'll do is clean that cell a little bit. And then I'll do hot glue or I'll do something else to put these back in a little bit better. So one of the things I like at Dollar Tree are these electronics wipes. Um, they tend to be not very streaky. Uh, they don't last very long. Like this set is already kind of dry. In fact, it's time for me to get some new ones. But these electronic anti-staticky wipes are decent enough. Although that stuff is pretty well baked on there. What do you think? Some rubbing alcohol? I think rubbing alcohol is as far as I'm going to go with it. And part of that is that this wipe is pretty dang dry. But about every six months, I get a set of these at Dollar Tree and wind up throwing the last of the other ones away, but they're really good on the monitors. Yeah, I'm not seeing... I think some of that might even be below the surface. Okay. We'll go ahead and clean our mating surface. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use Gorilla Glue hot glue. Uh, I mean, this is not a mission critical application. I find this Gorilla Glue hot glue to be really strong. I mean, obviously I live in Florida, so it's not great for holding up in super hot weather. So, you know, if you leave this stuff in a car or something like that, you definitely stand a chance of it coming loose. But it's pretty dang strong. I've said this before, but when I use this stuff on wood, uh, it's not uncommon for the wood to rip before this glue lets loose. And I really could have done better with the stringy. One of the things about this Ryobi glue gun is that it is so hot that it does lead to more st stringing. And uh, I've mentioned this in some forums and stuff like that, but most glue guns point down. And this one points straight forward. So you have a really good chance of running into something, uh, you know, running into the glue gun or something like that. So hit that as if... That was wood. A little bit more on this side. Now this glue, as I've mentioned many times, is ridiculously hot. So trying to grab a hold of that through that paper would be a fool's errand. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to push down. I'm going to flip it around and get the other side. So last but not least, I might as well see if I'm getting something out of this thing. Uh, let's set this over here. Solar battery, we got negative, we got positive. What is that, 100 millivolts? Is that what it is? Can't read it from here. 100 millivolts. Uh, so I mean, I'm definitely getting something out of the solar cell. Hey, it works. See if I can point the light a little bit more directly, see if it goes up. Oh, look at that. 117. Very nice. This is the Weston Model 440, number 4761 galvanometer. And it is from my home state of New Jersey. Now, if you go online and you look on YouTube for Weston galvanometer, you will see a lot of people making videos about how these things work and the principles are really cool and I'm not going to get into that in this video. In fact, this this thing might wind up in the hands of somebody who is more qualified to do a teardown than I am, but it is made of wood and it is um, a very, very cool device. Now, it is for measuring tiny amounts of current, uh, so 60 microamps is its range and there's a lot of cool videos showing how these things work but nobody has one you can pick them up on ebay they're not super expensive but when you look at the videos there's a whole bunch of animations and a whole bunch of of theory and there might be a couple of people who have some newer models but this is an og and so i don't know what year this is from yet i don't really know much about it at all but uh this was five bucks and i thought that was pretty reasonable for my experimental purposes. As you can see, this is a, uh, you can, I guess, do that for a set point. You can adjust and calibrate it using this little flathead screw. You've got positive and negative terminals here, and this little push button does something. Uh, now the question is, does it work? And I don't know, so we should find out. 
So if you're not subscribed to the Simple Electronics channel, you should be. Uh, he has a fancy rig for testing meters with super high accuracy resistors and things like that. But I have these AliExpress resistors right here. Uh, and I'm guessing they're not going to be as accurate as his, but let's check here. So we have a 100K resistor coming back at 98.4K, so good enough for our purposes. Uh, let's grab this, and then I do have some Amazon batteries and a battery box here. So if we hook that up to the batteries, we are getting... Two point eight one volts. So you take the ninety eight k resistor and the just shy of three volts, and you should wind up with somewhere like twenty eight ish uh, microamps on this thing. So maybe a little over that. So let's see what we have when we hook up the uh, galvanometer. I'm gonna have to solder that resistor on here. I'll be right back. All right. So let's hook the galvan galvanometer up. And we'll get this resistor wrapped around this pole. And contact. So we are getting, it's weird the way it kind of bounces like that. We're getting around 10 microamps. So I'm guessing this thing is about, I don't know what that button does. This thing is about half, uh, reading about half of what I think it should be reading. So I'm guessing this thing is, is definitely out of spec. I mean, it's gotta be 60 years old. Uh, but anyway, it does function. And, uh, yeah. So maybe I'll send this on to someone more talented than I am to do a teardown and explanation of how it works. So this is my $29 thrift store and flea market haul. I bought this and the bag of components for $10 at the flea market and then on the way home i picked up the electronics kit for 19 dollars at the thrift store so uh anyway that's what i got i appreciate you guys watching keep an eye out for this somewhere else